This is Francois Ross with Carbidatum, and today I'd like to use this video to demonstrate the integration between the IBM Planning Analytics platform and decision optimization using a use case and blueprint that is available uh, focused on staff allocation in, in this example for hospital or facility management. But this could be applied to any organization that may face this challenge of allocating staff and resources um, against particular scenarios. Um, planning analytics allows you to do what if scenarios and write back, um, which makes it very powerful. And when you integrate it with the power of AI and decision optimization, then, then it really increase um, not only your productivity, but your ability to um, you know, decrease costs and optimize um, addressing a certain use case or situation, which we know we are constantly facing um, those days. Um, so this example starts with an opening screen with a few metrics. Um, for example, the cost in dollars of my current staff, um, the number of hours, the shift allocated, number of vacation days per staff. You know, uh, actually, those are the the, uh, the total number of vacation days, and um, also a very relevant metric here, which is the number of COVID nineteen patients currently. Um, and at the bottom, I have the ability to uh, change my scenarios, which, by the way, you can have as many scenarios as you want. But I'm looking at scenario number one, and easily I can switch. And for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to actually focus on my second scenario and play around with that one. Um, if I look up here, I have a few tabs that have been built for this uh, particular blueprint. Um, uh, the next one is my staff tab. And you can see that my scenario two has been selected. And here I can see a few metrics uh, related to each, um, each of my staff, uh, whether they are permanent or temps. This is actually a really good um, application for any facility uh, that hires temps because that's where you really have to figure out your, your best scenario uh, from an allocation perspective. And here I can you know, look at that chart and uh, compare my staff for different metrics such as pay rate, qualification, seniority, etc., etc. Um, since this is right back capable, I can then, um, you know, simulate to, for example, here, increase uh, that certain pay rate by 10%. Um, and you can see that, uh, and by the way, this blueprint uh, looks like it's been developed uh, out in the UK or Australia. Uh, you can see the pound sign, but this could be any currency that you'd like. Um, and so I can, I can keep, you know, simulating pay increase, for example. And by either using a few shortcuts or just simply overriding the numbers here. And this will affect, of course, my cost, but it will affect other things and the rest of the, of the blueprint and of the model, as you will see later. So let me just uh, do a few more increase here just to uh, get this going. Um, I'm going to give a big pay raise to Gloria here. Um, so anyway, you can overwrite any, any one of those metrics here if needed and again those tabs can be secured uh, so that they're accessed only by a certain resources uh, within the organization so it could be an HR manager it could be a medical staff director could be a floor director um, you know whatever you may like um, the next tab is the skills tab this one um, was built to, sh to be able to match uh, certain skills and ability um, with the staff and all you can do here is basically flag yes or no whether that particular staff um, or nurse in this case has a certain skill or experience so you just click on on the cell here and you know you can add more skills based on it could be education it could be experience in a certain department so you basically just override those values so we made it very simple for um, a resource or, or our user to, um, to use this interface. The next tab is the shifts and requirements. Uh, so this is where um, you know you got some you've got some demand metrics that you have to uh, sorry there's some supply metrics that you have to comply to uh, by department. This example here shows only two different departments within this facility, but there could be more. And then you see uh, the day of the week and you know the start time of your shift, the end time. What's the minimal hours requirement? What's the maximum hours requirement? And those can be overwritten as well, as you can see. So I can change this 
as much as I want. And of course, it will it will impact other metrics and will also impact the way the optimization will run. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm just going to enter a few metrics here just to change them. But uh, you get the picture. It's, uh, it's just as simple as overriding um, those particular cells. The next one is uh, the days off. Uh, this could be, you know, again, entered by uh, an HR manager or or actually, uh, we've seen we've seen uh, facilities where the actual staff is allowed to go in there. But you know, again, it's a simple interface that allows you to flag yes or no. Um, you know whether you want to you know you have you want to hard code a day off here, and and you can change this uh, dynamically without impacting. Um, you know, of course, your actual. This is really uh, keep in mind we're still in a scenario modeling mode here. Finally. Actually, uh, this next tab is the constraint tab. Um, this one shows you the maximum hours that can be allocated. Maybe in this COVID crisis, I'd like to increase this to 60 um, to give me more, you know, more uh, bandwidth and more, you know, more uh, delivery capability um, to address this crisis within the facility. And here I have other more human uh, related uh, um, constraint um, which were added here in this blueprint um, and for example here I could say you know those the, this nurse Kathy uh, should not be working in uh, in a particular unit so this is just constraint that you can add um, at will to help with the modeling uh, same thing here the disciplines that are required could be overwritten and here that one is pretty interesting you can actually uh, kind of uh, hard code um, compatibility between uh, between staff so for example here I'm gonna add to this one that uh, Cecilia is uh, for some reason uh, not really uh, work no, not very productive working with Debbie so um, once you got that you get to the next one this is more a hard-coded table um, you can still override but it shows you the force assignment so those are the assignments that are currently in place that uh, Unless uh, you know, unless you really have to, you shouldn't be overriding. So that this is this is just to show you that you could have some uh, drivers we call them that uh, are hard coded in there. But you can still override in this case. But I won't do that for now. Um, the next tab is the optimization tab. That's where the magic happens. So basically, you can see the current state um, here. Uh, you can see the hours allocated, which is a purple line here. Um, you know, between uh, among all my my staff, you can see uh, other other metrics uh, among the staff, um, and you can also see number of COVID patient that's been allocated to the staff, and this can all dynamically change, of course, by scenario. And I have um, you know my total cost here uh, by different qualification as well. Uh, of course, uh, you know this could, this will change as you change your pay rate and your assignment, number of hours, all those drivers that we reviewed already. And this will lead to the optimized schedule, which already has the last scenario that I ran, but this is the schedule as of uh, prior to running the model, uh, the optimization model. And you can see here the allocated resource by staff um, and the start time and end time of the shift by day and by department. So if I go back to optimization here, um, we have a queue um, approach to, to this because, you know, this is a demo, but in real life, there could be a lot more staff, a lot more drivers. Uh, and of course, the model could take a little longer to run. That's why you can add it with those two action buttons um, to the queue. So I'm just going to add uh, scenario two to the queue here. You can see here, this is the second run of the model of the scenario number two. Um, that's my total resource cost here. And I'm going to just run the best model here and wait a little few seconds, a few seconds. And then once it's done, um, of course, you can see now it changed a few. It didn't change that much, but you saw some change happen here on the fly. And this will be reflected uh, in this uh, in this optimized schedule. So a very simple guided interface that can be customized for your facility um, and will hopefully help you with uh, can help with, you know, resource allocation modeling uh, without having to crunch those spreadsheets. Uh, this, uh, this, speaking of spreadsheet, this uh, optimized schedule can now be exported to Excel, for example, uh, and will simply open up as Excel and, and you'll be able to then either 
you know, uh, share it via email or 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 review it and and do some you know additional analysis and reporting. So here's my Excel spreadsheet. Um, so back to back to my uh, my planning anal analytics uh, platform. Uh, I want to show you something else to wrap up. Um, a little bit related, but different different model and different blueprint. Uh, we can also in planning analytics. Um, bring all those metrics and drivers together and create um, a diagram to align it or at least show you how much how it aligns to the organization uh, uh, strategic uh, goals and objectives um, in this example um, you can see the scorecard for a, a hospital here where of course the goal is to increase revenue but you know there's a lot of metrics that come in play here and if you click on one of them which this one is in neutral mode um, um, you can uh, neutral status. You can then um, look at the metrics that are der you know, that, that derive to to impact that metric. So so you can look at it by time. So that's probably the biggest the biggest benefit here is you can look at how the scorecard looked uh, at a particular time. Uh, you know now I'm looking at uh, June 2017. So what if I'd like to uh, look at this uh, a month ago? So, and, and the, yeah, this blueprint is, is, is a couple of years old, but um, you can see basically how the data was back then to see how you progress as far as, you know, uh, your performance metrics for the facility. Um, now, if I go back home, I can show you another diagram, which is uh, the impact analysis. This one will show you the same metrics, but grouped and, and um, you know the flow will be different because it's showing you the impact uh, of those metrics so if the actual expenditure versus budget is your key metric for your department and what you're accountable for then uh, it'd be great to see what are the deriving metrics and what is their current status as well um, and you can you know just with this uh, very nice navigable uh, interface you can you can look at the impact analysis of those metrics. This can be all customized, by the way. It's out of the box with the planning analytics platform, and it's just as simple as drag and drop to uh, to create a new map um, and, and and you know associate those metrics so that this diagram makes sense to your organization. So um, I hope this was helpful. Um, again, uh, please feel free to reach us at carpetdataminc.com. I'm Francois Ross with Carpet Datum, and on behalf of Carpet Datum and IBM, have a great day.